which means as we are talking through these processes, it's really important to understand what are the different kind of people that we meet through this journey. So when I have the first point of contact with my prospective customer, he's a stranger to me and I'm a stranger to him as well. So once they land up on your website, maybe they are looking for an information. They might be looking for a service provider, they might be looking for a product and they somehow come up, come up on your website. Now they are stranger to your brand initially. They don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about them. So there's this big phase from reach and attract to engage where they are just strangers. After that, once they are convinced enough that, you, that the information that you have got there is valuable for them, that's when they are happy to share their email uh, uh, contact details with you. Or, or some form of contact details. That's the first point of contact when you know who they are. So either they are sharing your e you, their email details, either they are, they are liking your social uh, media page, or maybe you are capturing uh, their details through uh, different uh, Google uh, tracing uh, bots, and I'll, I'll talk to you about it. But somehow it's really important to get their information so that you can convert them from strangers to leads so that you at least have some level of information about them. Once you, uh, once you nurture these leads, at one stage of time, they, they ultimately turn into prospects and then your sales team convert them into customers. Once they are converted into customers, the, the goal is not to just sell them one time, you want to convert them into the repeat customers and then you ultimately want them to become the, the ambassadors. So sales and marketing automation is all about taking strangers and turning them to your loyal ambassadors or brand ambassadors or loyal fans of your business. Taking them through this journey uh, as quickly, as smoothly as possible. So our goal should be to, to approach as many strangers as we can so that we can convert them into more leads, more prospects, more customers, more repeat customers, and more ambassadors. Now, you might say that my business is not that large, uh, or my business doesn't require all these steps. Well, it might be true, depending on the, the different size of businesses. So you do not need to follow the, the whole process to start with sales and marketing automation. What you can do is you can start looking at only one process or two process which is relevant for you. For example, if you have got a business where you do not have a lot of leads and you are looking for uh, more, uh, in each, more initial leads, what you can work on is try and concentrate on reach and attract and engage so that you can get as many people in uh, as you can. But if you have a, a business which is going on for a long time and you have a history of servicing or selling to a long number of people and you have got a huge customer list, then you might not uh, want to have uh, like a lot of new leads, but what you might want to focus on is actually converting and keeping and growing the existing customers. So you do not need to start from one point for sales and marketing automation and reach to another point. What you can try and do is you can try and think of one of the, the, the processes over there and, and, and start by automating that process. Now I'll talk to you about automation, but before that, there are a few other basics that I want to clear. The third important thing is the message. So we talked about the strategy or the approach. We talked about the people. The third important thing to understand uh, uh, across the customer journey is the message. So we start from reach and attract and we go up to grow. When we are starting with the strangers and the, we have very less information about the strangers, which means we don't know what their names are, we don't know uh, what they do. We might know a few things because we know that we are providing X and Y and Z particular services, which means we might know that they uh, are from our target market. They are from this particular target market. That's why I'm trying to reach them and attract them. So the information that I have with, for them initially is very minimum. Then I move on to the, the, the lead part when, when I have some information about them. Now I know what category they fall into. For example, I might have different customer categories. Uh, 
So what categories they fall into, uh, what, what are some of their requirements, what, what can be some of their pains and problems. Which means the message that I'm trying to convey to them can be now more focused and it doesn't need to be as generic as, as for other people. The messaging will change as I move up from strangers to the leads. As I move from leads to prospects, when, when I'm converting customers into prospects, I already know what their pain is, what their problem is, what they are looking for, and what are their approximate requirements, which means I've got much higher level of information about them. Again, the messaging will change because we have got uh, a lot of uh, information about them. And then ultimately, when you turn them into customers, you've got a completely new information about those people because you know who they are, uh, what was the problem, how did you solve it, what was the product they required, or what was the service they required, how did you solve it, and you know much more about their business. So that's when you have complete information about them. And then you can do a variety of uh, automations and very personalized messages so that they feel loved and they feel that I am getting benefits directly out of this company because this company cares for me and they know everything about me. So your messaging might go very generic, which is you are initially, to all the strangers, you are providing education around services or products, education around their probable pains and problems. But if I've done business with you for 10 years, or if I've been your customer for 10 years, and you send me the same message, I might not be very happy with you because you already know me and I'm, I'm, I'm receiving a message from you some, saying something, hey, do you know about Enterprise Monkey or whatever, which is not relevant to me. So it's really important to understand which level uh, of customer I'm talking to and what message I'm conveying to them. The next important part of the story is the channels. The channels that we use to reach our customers. And the channels that I'm talking about are the, the digital channels. The, the most important channel, of course, the central piece is our website. Then we look at different channels, which are social media, email marketing, Google, landing pages, content platforms. Now, we all know about these channels. But the problem is, how do we use these channels effectively in our marketing and sales strategy? Where do they fit? Uh, in the whole equation. Where do they fit and reach and attract? Where do they fit and engage? Where do they fit and capture, measure? And how do I use it for different purposes? So you might say Google is a channel, but now with Google, you have Google organic search, which you use uh, for people to reach your website initially. Then with Google, you have Google pay per click, where you actually pay Google so that if someone searches, your keywords come, your website comes up on specific keywords. And then you have got Google Display Ads, where Google actually traces the user back to uh, other websites, and they see your ads pop, popped up everywhere. So there are completely three different uh, types of Google channels, and their application is, again, different. So it's important to put them in a perspective. And what we have tried to do here is to try and put them in, in the perspective for you.